Uh, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com for premium picks. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there. Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Let's talk NBA. Let's talk basketball. Let's talk Western Conference. You got a huge game that's going to happen tonight in Los Angeles. It's the Clippers, everyone's favorite dark horse team. A team that's won several games in a row. And they're taking on the Golden State Warriors. A team on its own winning streak. A team that, quite frankly, has great outside shooting. At times. Right now, the line on this game is L.A. by six and a half points. We've heard about Lob City. Everyone's excited about the LA Clippers. Let me offer my take on this March 12, 2014. Right, as you look at the Western Conference, as you look at exciting teams to watch, like the Clippers and like the Golden State Warriors, as you hear about Kevin Durant of Oklahoma City as an MVP candidate what I want people to do is to take a hard look at yesterday's box score involving the San Antonio Spurs and the Chicago Bulls folks the game wasn't competitive San Antonio was blowing out the Bulls for much of the game understand in the Eastern Conference I would argue that the Bulls have a dark horse chance, right? The Eastern Conference looks like a two-team race. The Pacers and the Miami Heat. Of the other teams in the East, with all due respect to teams like the Washington Wizards, I would say that only two have an outside chance. The Bulls and the Brooklyn Nets. Sorry, Toronto. Well, my point to you is that the Bulls yesterday faced the San Antonio Spurs. Danny Green didn't even play for the Spurs. What happened? The Spurs hit the gas. The Spurs blew them out. As I make this video, the Spurs actually are the one seed in the Western Conference. Somehow, with all these Blake Griffin slam dunks on high-profile games like the All-Star Game, and with all the up and down, Steph Curry hitting threes, Kevin Durant hitting threes, scoring a lot of points, we've forgotten about the meat and potatoes of the conference. Folks, that's the team that made it to Game 7 of last year's finals, the San Antonio Spurs, of all of these teams. Even with the big game tonight that I'll watch and I'll enjoy, the San Antonio Spurs remain my pick to take the Western Conference. They're not even the favorites. Odds makers have made the Oklahoma City Thunder the favorites. I think there's an opportunity here. You're getting decent odds on the Spurs. Let's talk about tonight's game. Right between the Clippers and the Warriors. I'll say this. I know DeAndre Jordan blocks a lot of shots right I understand that he gets a lot of rebounds I'm troubled by him and I'm troubled by Andrew Bogut neither guy is even passable at the free throw line right you remember back in the day we talked about hack -a shack we talked about how having Shaquille O'Neal, a dominant player, on the court in the last two minutes of a game was perilous because opposing teams were going to foul him. Both of these teams have systemic problems at the center position. Let me go one step further. 
right? If you're a Clipper fan, you have to wonder about Blake Griffin's back to the basket game, don't you? He's a big man who views himself as a three, not a four, right? If you're a Warrior fan, when exactly is David Lee going to start playing defense, right? That's a cause for concern. You know, I have questions, too, about exactly what Harrison Barnes does on a basketball court other than look athletic, right? These two teams, to me, symbolize the kind of problems that, to me, are too widespread in basketball today. I see a lot of leapers. I see a lot of athletes. I see a lot of dunkers. I see a lot of specialists, right? J.J. Reddick, Clay Thompson, right? Specialists. What I don't see a lot of are all-round basketball players, right? I see that on the Spurs. Whatever you need on a given night, Manu Ginobili seems to find a way to give it to you. Right, the Spurs have guys with game who don't even get a lot of minutes. Take a look at Patrick Mills. Right, this is a guy, limited minutes, seems to be a serious baller. Right, these two teams, for whatever reason, I'm talking about the teams playing tonight, the Clippers and the Warriors, don't have enough Boris Diaz. Right? Manu Ginobili's. They just don't. I would make the argument that between these two teams, Chris Paul will be the best player on the court. I like Steph Curry's game. I don't like his handle. Look at his turnovers. Things like turnovers sound like nitpicking in the middle of March. Trust me, they can be series deciding defects in the playoffs. So, view me as a skeptic of both teams. I know they're on winning streaks right now. Right? I know it's a big game tonight. But the Clippers versus the Warriors are really more made for television than they are made for conference finals. Right? Isn't that the problem with these two teams? Haven't the Clippers been playoff level for a while? When are they going to get into a conference championship? When are they going to be able to beat the hard teams in the playoffs? Right, Conference championships, finals appearances, you almost take them for granted if you're a San Antonio Spur fan. By the way, the Spurs play the Portland Trailblazers tonight. If you're a Portland Trailblazer fan, all I can say is this year, it's fool's gold. Right? You started fast. You looked great. Things looked like they were coming together. You saw the young talent, Damon Lillard, LaMarcus Allridge. You thought, hey, you know what? Maybe this is our year. Then suddenly you started to notice that that team lacked defense. Certainly. They lack conference championship level defense, don't they? How did the defense look last night in the game they lost? In fact, isn't Portland on a losing streak? So the way I see the West is the way the West was last year. And that's with familiar faces like Greg Popovich Tim Duncan, Tony Parker, Manu Ginobili, again making it to the NBA Finals. We'll see if I'm right. Just understand, though, that right now you can get the San Antonio Spurs to win the title, a position you could hedge out of later at 9-1, to 10-1, to 1, depending on the book where you bet, right? My point to you is as you look out, in the Western Conference landscape, who's the team that's going to knock them off? Let me close by saying 
I know there are a lot of people in the state of Texas right now wearing Houston rocket gear. Convinced that Dwight Howard has had a great year and that James Harden should be in the MVP conversation. Fair enough. Understand Dwight Howard, as I make this video, goes to the free throw line an awful lot. Understand that he doesn't hit 60% of his free throws. Now I know there are many who will then say Chamberlain didn't hit many free throws. Bill Russell didn't hit many free throws. Okay, fair enough. Shaquille O'Neal, back when the Lakers three-peated, didn't hit many free throws, right? Dwight Howard is not as dominant as any of those guys. He's not the scorer that Wilt and Shaq were. He's decent defensively. I understand he's won Defensive Player of the Year awards. He's not Bill Russell defensively. Right? Understand Dwight Howard right now, I don't believe, is averaging two blocks a game. For all of the hype, his game pales in comparison to the game of the Pelicans' Anthony Davis. Don't believe me? Just compare the numbers. Right? Just look at the numbers. By the way, if you look at the games and not just the numbers, you're going to notice that Anthony Davis actually has more range than Dwight Howard on his shot. So to the people in Houston, I don't believe it's your year. I believe continuity helps teams, right? When we say Popovich, Tim Duncan, Manu Ginobili, Tony Parker, those guys have been together for quite some time, haven't they? Dwight Howard just got to Houston. Dwight Howard can't hit free throws. Dwight Howard is not averaging two blocks a game. Dwight Howard's not in the area code of averaging what Shaquille O'Neal averaged scoring-wise in his prime. I think Houston needs a little bit more. So, right, just looking at the NBA's Western Conference, I believe the value play here is to take non-favorite, they're one of the favorites, but not the top favorite, the San Antonio Spurs. I believe this year is the same as it ever was, right? It's more of the same from last year. I believe the Spurs are the class of the Western Conference. We'll see what happens. I think a futures play with the Spurs right here is warranted by the odds you can always, if the Spurs get deep in the playoffs and play a team like the Oklahoma City Thunder in the conference finals, you could always hedge to play. If they get to the finals against, dare I say it, the Indiana Pacers, you should be able to hedge the play. And if you're looking at the top of the East, right? All I can say is, I understand Miami has been to three straight finals. Okay, great. Did you like their margin of victory in last year's NBA Finals? Weren't they losing the game? Game six, with what? Less than two minutes left? Didn't that game come down to Chris Bosh getting a rebound, throwing it out to Ray Allen in the corner, Allen hitting a three to get that game into overtime. Isn't that what happened in game six? In fact, this Heat team, are they really that dominant? Weren't they favored a few years back to beat the Dallas Mavericks? Didn't they lose in the NBA Finals? They come back and beat a much younger team than them, the Oklahoma City Thunder, then, of course, they're favored to beat the Spurs and really could easily have lost Game 6. Now you're dealing with a situation where, of course, Dwayne Wade only plays a certain amount of time. Mike Miller is no longer on the team. The team's lacking a big-time center. 
right? Isn't that the heat today? Ray Allen, you know, um, all I'm saying is simply Pacers have a chance in the East. We'll talk about that in another video. Let me know your take on the NBA, right? Lay it out for us. Tell me where I'm wrong in the West. I'll tell you wherever I go and I talk to people about basketball or people come up to me and talk about basketball, I'm always hearing about the Oklahoma City Thunder, right? Does Russell Westbrook know that he's not the primary scorer on that team? Do you feel comfortable with Russell Westbrook running your offense? I know he puts up gaudy numbers, right? But don't you think a Magic Johnson or a Jason Kidd, if he had Kevin Durant as his teammate, would run that offense a little bit differently? Let me hear from you. To sum up, I like the... San Antonio Spurs in the Western Conference. Right? In the Eastern Conference, I think there are only four teams with a viable shot at it. The two top teams, Indiana, Miami. And then I'll throw in, as dark horses, the Chicago Bulls who just got their butts kicked last night and the Brooklyn Nets. By the way, you remember when people said Jason Kidd couldn't coach? Jason Kidd right now is over 500. Right? This is with Kevin Garnett, a great defensive player, missing action because of back spasms. Right, Those vets have come together in Brooklyn. I think you need to keep an eye out for them. Right? Keep in mind, earlier in the year when they were struggling, they beat the Miami Heat in Brooklyn. That's the kind of veteran, hard-nosed team that has guys who are wearing rings, right? Paul Pierce, um, Kevin Garnett. They have a lot of older guys who feel that they've been in the league long enough where they deserve to wear rings, right? That's the kind of team that's not going to be intimidated by the moment, right? Take a look at them as a dark horse as you assess NBA futures. Let me hear from you. Thanks for stopping by.